Right. Okay, the City of Washington Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Um, we'd like to schedule for September 14th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Can we have roll call, please? Dan Cassette. Bob Zurich. Bob Kleppel. Present. Kevin Creedy. Here. Essie Steffens. Here. Sparky Stuck Schneider. Jeannie Miller Wood. Here. Dave Waymeyer. Here. Betty Werner. Gavin Woolley. Here. Al Bear. Here. And Jeff Packey. I'm here. All right. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone has had a chance to read the minutes from the meeting October 10th. I, if uh, there are no changes, I need a motion to accept and a second, please. Make a motion to approve. Motion, motion by Gavin and a second by Jeannie. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Park and Recreation Director's Report, Wayne. All right, um, so I think possibly some of you may have seen on Facebook and even the police report that the police uh, put out on Facebook, the daily report um, over the holiday weekend at the beginning of the month. Uh, we had several vandalisms in the park, uh, graffiti in the bathrooms at Optimus, um, several rounds of donuts in the fairgrounds, um, and then we had another round yesterday, I think it was. Mm. And so with that weekend being rainy and kind of nasty, I had a feeling there wasn't going to be a lot of people out in the parks. Um, and so we, I had staff texting me pictures and, and, and things like that. And so I decided to lock all the gates up to fairgrounds uh, to keep the cars out of there because I knew it was going to rain some more that weekend. And I just didn't want to. The other thing is the police, at last I heard, I heard today they were still short staffed. Uh, I didn't hear a number. But last I had heard, they were three down. And uh, between the holiday weekend, them being three down, I didn't want to have to have them send them up there every day or more than once a day to do um, reports on donuts in the fairground when the easiest solution, and they've, they've asked me to do that in the past, uh, is just lock the gates for a while. And so we did that. And um, do you not all the gates even have locks on them, but we closed them. But then I got pictures, and maybe someone even here, Gavin, I don't know, if someone texted me a picture that the gate was open. And I know some of those gates, unless you bungee cord them shut, if there's not a lock, they don't have a lock, if you don't bungee cord them shut, they magically open on their own. But I also have a feeling that maybe someone, a citizen or someone, just, well, why is this gate closed and opened it? That could be the case, too. It, that happens. Yeah. So, but if they're closed, you know, if they're closed the majority of the time, and if that prevents some people from destructing, you know, making more work for us, it, I think it was a good, good call on our part, on our part. And then the vandalism at the Optimus bathrooms, uh, well, going back to the donuts, they did catch uh, one of the two, there was two different instances up there, or occurrences, I should say, up there, and they caught uh, one person that was responsible for one of the, one of the times. And then at uh, Optimus, um, they have video, I don't know if you all saw it on Facebook, um, of people with a pretty specific car and uh, audio of the person doing it and things like that. So hopefully they catch, um, catch that person too. I haven't the heard anything. Yes. Yeah, they the kid, did. kid who said, what are you yeah. doing with the spray paint? Yeah. Oh, and I thought, oh, yeah, I thought the kid said, oh, where are you going to go spray paint? There you go. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. No, no, no. And really, Wayne, I mean, we've got some big events coming up and stuff. If, if we have to lock things, I say lock it. I hate to do that, but this, is co this costs the city and the taxpayers. And if nobody's willing to step forward to help us find out how this is happening or who is doing this or whatever, then maybe the bathrooms need to be locked a little longer and maybe a gate needs to be closed a little longer because it's expensive. You know, it makes it hard 
for me, every time this happens, so we have the next big project coming up in the half cent sales taxes to spend $150,000 over there to renovate the skate park. And it makes it really hard to do that or even think about doing that when, the, I mean, this is, oh, if I had to guess this, this year, how many times that bathroom's been spray painted, I bet you at least 12 times probably. Wow. Well, and the, and the, and the if we get on it quick, it comes off fairly easy. But well, and the sad thing is, if you saw the video, I don't think that these people were skateboarders, <laughs> and I don't want to give skateboarders a bad name because usually that park is packed, and they're using it. And I, you know, somebody had put in there with comments, "So, what do you expect from skateboarders and things?" And yeah. I, you oh, know, no, I, no. I, I don't think that's a fair statement at all. But if you saw the video, I, my doubts were that these people were skateboarders. They Police would, report said that they were at the park earlier skating and then were there late. This is what the police report said to, this morning. Well, if you look at the video, I, 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 yeah, it is. And I would hate to, I don't want to see, I like that park. They, wait, they waited 30 years for that park, and it's used every day. Yeah. If, if you I go by there, that park is used all the time, and there are lots of little kids out there and big kids and... And a lot of parents too. Yeah, yeah, that's what. And then they use that back area, you know, the pavilion. Used a lot. And, yeah, and that's there's a basketball, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and they and play basketball back a there. A fair amount too. Um, I just I don't know if it's like an ongoing, if it's the same people. You know, we've in the past, other times, other years, we've the, there's cameras there, and we we have caught people there. I just don't understand why it keeps happening over I, and over and over. I don't understand why either. Wayne, as far as them donuts, how much damage could they do if they ever get up there on Runzik Field? Um, well, a lot. They probably haven't, but I mean, do them gates stay locked all oh, yeah. the time? Yeah, those okay. gates are locked. Right. Yeah. That's... yeah, that roll gate over there by the garage is always locked. Yeah, yeah. okay. And that's the only one they could get a car through, so. Yeah. Yeah, so anyways, long story short, yeah. And so it happened again this week, I, uh, yesterday, I think it was. Or day before, one of the two. Um, day before, I think. someone sent me some pictures. So it's just, this is a white dodge, similar to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, oh I was told. And, and we do have cameras yeah. up there too. You have any other day in the park? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me see well, those. You, well, you vouch for me that I wasn't down there. <laughs> we do have cameras up there too, but the, they're on the building, and and usually the car is so far away you can't yeah. see the license plate or not very well, anyways. So we'll add to the cameras. Yeah, so something has to be done. People can't get away with that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We added one right before the fair. We t there was one on the west side of the building on the corner, and we assumed it was a fair camera. The fair assumed it was ours, and I asked JB, you know, it, it was a different camera than what we normally have. So we that's why we assumed it was theirs. And then she's like, no, that's that's a city camera. She goes, I think that's an old camera from like the previous administration, like when the building was first built. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, we're going to take sense. it down then and put up a, because we need, that bathroom also gets vandalized and we only had one camera pointing at it. And so this spring we had someone, which they caught, I think, but there were certain angles that we needed and we could only, we only got certain angles because we only had one camera, but now we have two cameras pointed at the doors. So we should be able to get what we need. <clears throat> Anyways, um, also um, next project. Once a, we're spending a lot of time, and I don't, some of you guys um, have probably seen us out. You, all of you know about the um, community cleanup we had last Friday. Um, went well. There's some people in this room that are uh, very good at painting. That helped us out a lot. Uh, <laughs> I heard um, you scaffolding. And so we're doing staff. I had all my staff that were here that day out doing different stuff. You, they may not have been all in the same place, but they were somewhere in the city, whether it was a park or on the streets or painting um, railings at Main and Elm, uh, improving downtown green spaces, green areas, gathering spaces, um, all in preparation for American in Bloom. And so myself, Casey, staff, all of, everything you see staff doing right now for the last probably two weeks is all because they're doing a lot of work right now at the lake, all in preparation for American in Bloom, um, for the people to be in town, um, just cleaning up overgrown beds, you know, grading, seeding, um, downtown we're painting, sanding, 
Jim um, cut pretty much the entire uh, weed weed on the banks uh, around Lions Lake. That's, yeah, today. Yeah. That's all pretty well cleaned up. Some of that was for in preparation for the fishing tournament this weekend uh -huh. too. Um, the Elks, which we're a sponsor of, is having their fishing tournament this weekend. So I wanted to get that cleaned up for them. Um, and then it's, you know, just in general, the weather's cooler, grass is starting to grow again. So we're trying to get everything seeded, especially around the fillions um, going. So up until uh, the 30th of this month, that's what we'll be, um, that's consuming my life and Casey's life, the, all the administrative and paperwork and documents and all that stuff too. So, and then I'm out checking on stuff, making sure stuff's getting cleaned up and staff's doing what they need to do. Well, a big thank you to Casey too, because I know she's done a lot of lot of work and all the yeah. emails she's been sending out and all the paperwork and yeah. stuff in prep. We <coughs> appreciate it. Coming map gurus. Because <laughs> <laughs> national AIB Nationals wants maps of the walking tour and the bus routes and where yeah. the buses are going to park and all that stuff. So, um, yep, um, lots of different. Everyone's wearing lots of different hats these days. Um, and then we got all like the street signs painted black uh, that weren't painted black, um, all in like this TIF district down here. So uh, and it's looking really nice. It does look good. It'll be a nice event. So, uh, Is that going to become a maintenance issue? Uh, possibly, but if we can keep putting it on, like as far as painting the street sign. The, the pole. The pole. Well, they're, they're supposed to be put in black to begin with, um, purchased black. Um, and like they were when this, when they got the grant for the Jefferson here in the mm -hmm. street. Um, and then the agreement that I was told is that everything downtown was supposed to be black. Well, it hasn't been, uh, that hasn't been even recently hasn't been put when they redo a sidewalk and stuff hasn't been put in in black. And so I brought this to Do John and John Nilgis and Darren's attention and even Sal, and the comment was made is, yes, Darren from Darren said, yes, they should be, everything should be black or anything that comes out and goes back in should be black and that the TIF funds will pay for that. And so I sent that to the street department to make sure we're all on the same page and uh, hopefully we are. Your comment, um, <clears throat> but as far as painting galvanized signs black, um, we can, never has been done as part of community cleanup day um, in the spring when we have it in June, but it can be now, just like spraying weeds. Every year we spray weeds, we can paint up, touch up any signs that need to be touched up. Okay. And then as they come out or get hit or damaged, the street department should be putting them in black then, so. Thank you. Um, next, uh, a couple small jobs. I, as soon as this is over, next week I'll be out of town at the National Parks and Rec Conference um, in Arizona, which will be good to kind of take a breather before this AIB thing. Um, but I'll, there's a lot of connections and a lot of, uh, I can get a lot of information on projects and stuff that we're working on or we'll be working on here in the near future while I'm there because they have big um, vendors, convention hall type thing. Um, but some of the next projects when I get back to do would be to try to get the caboose bit out and painted before Christmas, before it gets too cold. And then uh, the fence around Phoenix Playground, um, that shouldn't be too hard to get that going. And then, like I said, the big project, well, there's a, several other big projects. We got uh, the trees up on First Parkway. Um, we have that project that needs to happen this fall. Uh, uh, Phoenix, uh, not Phoenix, uh, Miller Post project that needs to happen this fall, and then there's some little projects. Uh, talking to Lions Club, there's a possible donation of a um, like a mini shelter at the dog park that they want to do, and that would probably fall sometime this winter, this fall, this winter, you know, sometime uh, the next before spring, probably. And that's just off the top of my head. I think there's a couple other small ones too. But, uh, Skate park would be the big one, big one, and most of that can be, would probably be contractor work. So, but then all these little ones are, will stack up too on top of us. But so, that's the thinking now. And then uh, this week, tomorrow actually, I have a meeting with uh, uh, Sully and JB at the fairgrounds to kind of go over the restoration of the fairgrounds because there's still some ruts and. Uh, Barkledge Field's pretty hilly, 
uh, right now from when the tractor trailer is parked on it, um, the grass portion of it, and then um, just some other maintenance type things that we need to get cleaned up before they kind of close out things on the fair for this year. And uh, finally, at the next meeting, we'll have a pool report for you um, on how we did at the pool this year. Numbers, financials, attendance, all that good stuff. Great. Doggy dip was a huge success. This year. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, on that note, I forgot this part. Uh, I wanted to let you know, so this year, I was just at a meeting yesterday with area parks directors uh, regarding um, pool management companies. And um, everyone, so MPM was the topic. Um, so I was there with other directors that have contracts with MTM, MPM and they were all a lot of them were having problems uh, like the second week of August finding guards just because all the guards go back to high school and, and things like that now we have the effects of COVID no one wanting to work so it's all been magnified plus the lifeguard shortage it's just like a snowball rolling downhill but um, <laughs> I had to raise my hand and say that uh, you know they're only talking about about the first really first two weeks in August having issues. And I said, well, we added a week this year. And um, I want to let you know I have the numbers for that because we paid, if you remember, I came to you all, I guess back in the winter, late winter. And the price to do that off the top of my head was 8,000 something to, for that week, Monday through Friday. And so last year, that week was really hot before uh, Washington High went back to school and we had calls about it and pool was new, um, yada, yada, yada. We had a total attendance um, this year, 507 people. And so that breaks down, we had 316 dailies come in that paid the $7, so that equals $2,212. And then we had 191 people that scanned the uh, punch cards to come in. So a total of 507 people used the pool that week. Um, we brought in $2,200 and paid $8,000. Um, now the caveat was when I went to the president of the lifeguard company, NPM, she said, we'll do it this year, but we need to look at it for next, any future years because <clears throat> we still have another year on the contract. And if we have a hard time finding guards this year, then we, we would like not to do it in the future. And I said, yeah, I understand that. Um, we didn't really have a problem finding guards this year because uh, we were closed one of the days, completely closed because of rain, and the other days were cool and not sunny and very, you know, over five days we had 500 people show up. Um, but you still have to have guards on call and readily available, no, even if you're not open, don't you? Um, well, we're not paying for it, though, unless they no. actually work. Oh, okay. Um, but, I, I mean, we don't have to make a decision here now. I just wanted to, you know, think about that for next year. I don't know. Like I said, we paid $8,000 for it, brought in $2,200. Uh, the weather was crappy this year. But I have a feeling, based on what I heard yesterday from other directors, that NPM probably won't want to do it next year. If they're already having problems two weeks prior at other places, I, I was surprised they pulled it off, but we did. Uh, and that's all I have. Any questions about anything? No. Okay. Um, there's no communication from the audience. So we'll move to old business and the Riverfront Playground grant. Oh, yes. Uh, so Tyler King of downtown applied for a grant through Union Pacific on our behalf. Um, and they, Union Pacific is is providing a ten thousand dollar grant for that'll be used for the playground so that knocks Very that good. price of i think it was eighty five thousand dollars down to about seventy five thousand dollars and they are starting to fundraise starting this month they're going to be i saw a calendar or dates anyways of they're going to be going to lions and rotary and all those organizations so um okay so let's move it along and um, Bush Creek Greenway. I put that on there. Um, I have not been on it yet. Um, I've been by it several different places. 
Uh, and then I was in a meeting today, the core meeting, and, and someone stated that it was open. I don't think it is open, but I haven't had time to check with John because uh, this is a public works project right now until it is open. Um, and then once it is open, then it becomes parks. Um, but I have not been notified that it's open now. However, I know there's people walking in. Yeah, doing yeah I mean, gonna say it, sure. it's, not they're, they're it's not blocked it. off. It's not blocked off. People are walking on. You know, it's not blocked off saying it's closed, yeah. but I don't think it's officially open either because they're not it's, they're not done with it. Well, down by <laughs> South Point, they're using it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to. They're using it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make I just you aware. tell that one. I yeah. Because uh, I just painted the uh, Sharrows um, yeah. on the street last week, I think it was. Um, so I'll get some more information on that. Um, the yellow line is down the center. Yeah, down the center, yeah. It's the... pretty well seeded and strawed, I think. Yeah. It looks like it. Um, but I, last I heard, which was recently, that they had some more work to do somewhere, but I don't remember where that was. I think they're still working on the trailhead down there at Jefferson. Yeah, they still got so it. It looks like there's an entryway configuration of yeah, some certainly. sort. So, yeah, speaking of that, I didn't realize this. I was always under an impression that the parking lot, there's going to be a little parking lot go in, and we have a, they have a plan for that. And I thought it was going in there, but it's not. It, it'll be at uh, Locust there and 8th. So where the, it looks like there's a big hole there, you know, where yep. the new houses are. Oh, yeah. That next to that new house there, there's like a big, almost like a sinkhole there. And then um, the trail crosses the street there. There's a little section there. It's not super big, but I think that's where the parking lot would be. So you would park there, and then I guess if you, technically if you wanted to do the whole trail, you would get out of your car, go up to Jefferson and Eighth, do a little back. turnaround well, and then come loop. back and yeah, that's right. They that's do have a loop there. there. And the center yeah. thing there good is plan. a light good pole. Good planning. The center thing there that's missing is a light pole that will go in there. So, so a little bit to that, um, where the where you think the trailhead starts now at Jefferson Street? Obviously, that's the start. The city just sold a piece of property right next to that. So between the house that's there and that trailhead. Um, I'm not going to say who I think it's public knowledge, but whatever. Someone bought that. They're going to put a retail in the lower level apartments on top. The parking will be part of the floodplain next to the trail. So the hope is that that will be a shared parking lot for the trail and for that retail spot there. I didn't that, think it was going. But it, do, it doesn't. We are at their, right their we are at their mercy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry. We are at their mercy to share that parking lot. Yeah, they bought, they bought the land. The so contingency is not in there that correct. it's shared. Again, I, I don't want to say too much. Right. But I think it's public, but I don't want to. I it, was, it was in public that it was done. Yeah, it was okay. last week. Ed, Ed Schmelz has bought that <clears throat> from okay. the city with intentions to put a building similar to what the Wainwright building is, maybe not quite that big, but a spot where there'll be parking there, lower level, retail, office, whatever, and then apartments above. So they'll have to have parking spaces for that like so many, to me yeah, yeah. so um, again this has not been discussed but in my mind if you have a parking lot there for that retail spot and the trailhead starts there someone's going to park there and walk the trail that's going to be a mess um, so I don't know yeah I don't the good news is I think Ed is fine to work with us but I have I'm not going to quote anything that he's I, I wouldn't count on a I wouldn't count on one space out of that R correct. I'm just saying that's kind of why why there's not a parking lot there. Oh, thank it's you. Taken. It was a sold piece of property. The city doesn't own any more than what the trail is. But I was and under an impression that it was going down on Locust. It there, is. There is going to be a couple spots there too. Oh, okay. But yes. Jeff's trying to say there might be I potential for somebody to park there if and when. Right. Gotcha. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I think it, that's the reason there's not a parking lot there is because it was After a, six a correct after lot. Close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Again, I don't want to sit here and speak for Ed and say, "Hey, use my parking lot all you want," but I think there will be a potential there. Um, work together, have an agreement with him, or something like that. So. so, I'll talk to John. I haven't had a chance to track him down and find out when the project will be complete and when it will be officially opened. And I think Darren, if I remember correctly, he said he wanted to have like a grand opening type thing. So, you all would obviously be invited to that. So. Wayne, you said it is a public works project right now. It's contracted out. What do you envision the park's position will be once it is open? 
Well, we'll have sections. John sent out something uh, a while ago. Um, streets will have sections. He sent out like aerial maps of it, um, <clears throat> kind of almost like right away of the trail. And uh, streets will have sections of it, and parks will have sections of it too. Um, and so it'd be mowing, and then obviously any of the concrete work, if that would ever break up or anything like that, you know, we'd be responsible for it. And then I guess you know, there'd probably be maybe a trash cans on there somewhere at some point. There should be. There's, we should put some trash. You know, right now there's ballards there <clears throat> when you cross a, a street to get people to stop. And so we can, those will be removable if we ever need to get on there with a, a piece of equipment or truck or whatever. Um, if there's any issues with that, you know, could be, like I said, I, my plan is, I had plans last week, it didn't work out. My plan is uh, maybe to do it Friday before I leave, is to bring my bike out and just uh, bike it real quick, just so I know what I'm kind of, because Chad and I, neither one of us have seen it, like been on it or anything, and I'd like to know what I'm getting myself into before, you know, <laughs> when people start asking questions like yourself, you know. Well, and I'd like to know from our standpoint, I mean, what kind of man hours? I mean, this project has been in the development stages for years, and at the beginning of it, I, I said no because we didn't have enough parks workers to do what we had. Um, again, I think it's a great, a, a great addition to the park system and the trail, no doubt about it. But it, there is validity to know how much park man hours are going to take on that trail to maintain, whether it's trash cans no, or, or <clears throat> park trimming, um, tree trimming, anything like that needs to be known. So the next time we need an additional maintenance yeah. person, it, it needs to be known. That's where, you know, that's where the things are going. We can't just continue to grow the parks and not grow the staff. Yeah. I, that's why I want to, I want to bring my bike out and take John's maps that he made. And so I can ride it and be like, okay, this is this area that I'm looking at on this map and kind of get a feel for how big it is and how much mowing and, and stuff like that. Cause I've only been by different sections of it from the truck, but I haven't even gotten out of the truck to, you know, right. and you can only see so much from the road too, because then it goes yeah. behind houses and, right. and stuff like that. So um, that's my plan is maybe Friday to get out and take a look at it and then, and kind of go from there. So nobody will see you. Yeah, <laughs> I've been riding my bike a lot around town. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay, under new business, we have American Bloom Conference. Uh, kind of covered at least what staff's doing. Um, just so you all know, um, so we have about 150 people from all over the country here in town on the 30th. Um, kind of, I guess the best way to describe it is seeing what Washington does, how they operate, how what the town looks like, the old buildings, uh, uh, you know, Front Street, the river, the history, new projects, um, and they'll come in town. The, the conference, it's a national conference. It's a, a um, so every year normally, and we haven't competed since 2019, um, and I say compete, but we haven't been judged, I guess, since 2019, my first year. 2020 was COVID. Last year, they did not have a, a judging portion of it because earlier in that year, they weren't sure what COVID was gonna do and a lot of the judges are retired and at least that when they had to make a decision earlier in the year last year, um, the judge, they couldn't find judges. They didn't know if they'd be able to fly to get to some of these places that were being judged um, and all that stuff. And so they, they did have some awards, but it was um, not judging awards. And we did win some awards last year for community garden and uh, things like that. Uh, but this year it's like full blown. They've sent judges out all over the country to have these cities judged on different things. Um, the conference, the awards conference uh, and the educational parts in St. Louis, the Hyatt, uh, they'll be down there most of the time. They'll take different tours of like Forest Park and, and things like that while they're in St. Louis. Coming out here on the 30th for lunch, Buses will come in, take them to Main Park Pavilion. We'll have lunch there, do introductions. They'll do a, see a demo, demonstration of our watering truck. Uh, they'll go in the auditorium, look at the roof of the auditorium. There'll be a, the zither band will be playing in there, uh, zither instruments. And then there's like three different tours. Uh, there's a tour of the fairgrounds and all abilities and Cole Miller House and then around the lake. There's a tour of uh, this complex here, public safety, city hall, library. And then they'll go down uh, past uh, the winery here, Vino, um, past 
the uh, nest over there on Elm, the corner of Elm and Fourth, down Elm to Second Street, past the post office, past Lafayette Plaza, over to the Godfrey Cabin, down Jefferson to Andy's development down there. And there's speakers all along the way here talking about these different things. And then down Front Street, past uh, Train Depot, Heritage Park, and the Freight Depot, and then up to Farmer's Market. And that's that's the mainly the walking tour. The fairground tour is a walking slash driving tour. Um, and then they will, there'll be like a five o'clock cocktail hour thing where people can kind of mingle with some of the speakers. And then at six o'clock, there'll be like a farm to table type dinner in Main, at Main Street there, on Main Street, I should say, uh, where all the attendees will gather, eat dinner, mingle with the, um, committee and things like that then they'll get on the bus and then they'll have they'll have some shopping walking time there between the end of the walking tour and dinner and even after dinner they can mingle around before the buses leave which I think is about eight o'clock I think they leave town they go back down to St. Louis and then the awards ceremony and everything is Saturday night in St. Louis and um, then they leave we've been planning this for well, my whole time I've been here since 2019. <laughs> in February of 2019, we had a meeting in here with volunteers, I remember, and trying to get volunteer names and numbers and a list and stuff. So, well, and I think you guys have been invited to the dinner, so we would hope that you'd come. If not, you will be invited to the dinner, yeah. the council, the city. city council. It, it, it's not just all about beautiful flowers. <clears throat> so it's really, no. it's, it, it really is. It's about your tree canopies, the impact of growth on your community, what what cities do to improve areas, industrial areas. I mean, it it is a it's just not about putting it's pretty pots out in the street. Trees. And there's some really extremely smart people involved in this throughout our country. And well, yeah, I'm not talking about the board here. <laughs> And um, and it's an international thing as well. Yeah. And Washington has been asked to compete internationally. So if you guys have any time at all on that Friday, if you can't make the meal, at least come down at around 4:30 or 5, and just because they people, you will be amazed at these people. They're they're it's it's pretty cool. The biggest thing it really makes you think because when we were judged back in uh, 12 when we had the drought, the one judge was from California and uh, you know, we apologize because things look bad. He goes, so what are you doing to prepare for that? <laughs> and it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, it'll rain next year. But I mean, it really, <laughs> in California, it's a major thing, you yeah. know, and they like really make, know what you're doing. Yeah. they really made you think. And like with our downtown signs and stuff, you know, we take so much for granted, but he's like, so directional signs, how do I know where to go downtown? You know, your signs aren't straight. It was just, you know, the mural, what are you doing? You're a German community, but you have no German restaurants. You have no German festivals. It was just a lot of stuff like that that we never thought about. So it's more than just the flowers. And like what we do for preserving our downtown, what Andy's done, that really impressed them. And when they were here two weeks ago, a week ago, uh, Andy's produce Bruce, down there. Yeah. They said, how many cities want a grocery store downtown, and how did you do that? You know, what, what gets your people excited? And then we talked about the fair, and uh, she was just amazed. She said, so it's volunteers, and you're only charging 45 to $50 to get in? That's, that's amazing. She said, that's more, or that's less than you pay for a ticket when we go to a concert. You know, so they've been very impressed, and that's why we're really hoping that uh, on the 30th we can impress everybody. Yep. We will. We will. We yeah. will. Yeah, and thank you. you know, there's a lot of people that are sitting up here that are involved in, in this in various ways, whether they're making posters or painting railings and, and uh, coming up with tours and tour stops and... Booze. Dave and I have. Yeah. <laughs> Booze. That's Dave and I became best <laughs> friends this week, community? talking on the phone. <laughs> it's a one. It's a. We've one, had so many texts. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about it, it's really unique too. Any other time we went to any conference, usually they have the lunch is everybody together, and at night you're on your own, which is okay. 
but we're actually going to have them together because we're doing a taste of Washington at the main pavilion and then have a set down dinner. They have a takeaway wine glass that's got the emblem on. Um, it's a very upscale type thing that we're trying to put on this year. Good. Yeah, yeah. They won't, they'll, they'll be shocked. Yeah. Um, so that's all on American and Bloom. Okay, new Phoenix Park map sign. Yes, uh, so if you haven't been um, out to Phoenix lately, um, this was in the plans before the, or um, well, when the, uh, when we had the grand opening of the playground. And, um, you know, we did a dedication for the uh, Richard Strotman Trail, and I came up with those little dinky signs, and I told Mr. Vanacy that, that those, that's not the plan, because he was, I could tell he was a little disappointed. That was just a makeshift sign, or those two signs were just makeshift signs. And this, what you see out there now, I don't know if you've been out there, but um, was the ultimate goal is to have, we've never had a trail map sign or any really kind of signage off the parking lot of anything that's out there. You know, you're kind of left, you show up in the parking lot and you're kind of left on your own to figure out what to do or where to go. However, down at the other entrance to the park, the easement off of Rabbit Trail, there was uh, in 2012 or 14, maybe it was, a Boy Scout project that put in a sign down there, which was a very cool sign um, of the park with trails and everything. I think they may have had the distance of the trails on there. And so I wanted to replicate that sign um, and improve it some and put one sign up at the top off of the parking lot and then we replaced the sign down um, uh, by the bridge coming off Rabbit Trail too. And so I, I removed the sign that, that the Boy Scout made and on that sign it had his name and the year and, and everything. And so we removed the insert of that sign and then we put the new, new insert in and then I ordered a plaque and put it, we attached the plaque to the wooden structure and still has his name and, and the year and, and who made it and everything like that. And so. Um, I just wanted to let you know that that is in those little dinky signs uh, will come down and then uh, we will get the, the fence in here too shortly. So um, things are moving along slowly but surely. There was some question about fencing out there around the playground last month, I think. I don't know. Do we still have fence we need to put in out of Phoenix? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we got to put in playground fence. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of my... I heard Mission signs. Lago. I didn't hear fence. Well, earlier, the, earlier, the earlier. project, the small projects, okay. yeah. the caboose and okay. that fence are like my two top yeah. as soon as America gotcha. comes over to get going on. <clears throat> and then um, <clears throat> lastly, Eagle Scout projects. We, had a, we have one that's been ongoing, or um, you'll see here because he turns 18 in October. Um, he's under the gun. Um, <laughs> there'll be a sign go in at the dog park. Uh, one side will be like a kiosk sign where you can post anything, you know, like just piece, tack a piece of paper up, lost my dog, whatever. And then the back side um, of it, um, I think I have this right, will be the dog, dog park donors that donated to the dog park. And so he worked with myself and um, I always call her dog park lady, Amy. Uh, Egan? Kneehaus. 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 That's right. Sorry. Um, Mainly the scout worked with her, but uh, I got the two <laughs> together and we got all the names and everything because she had all that. And then also they'll be putting in some simple wooden um, play structures out in the in the park, a little ramp and uh, cool. uh, just small stuff that will be stained that they'll be putting in, I think possibly this weekend. Um, <laughs> but the other Boy Scout project that is in is at Crestview Water Tower Park. Um, there's a bench over there on a concrete pad right off the street. And so that, that's nice because we nice. don't really have anything there. I was always leery about putting anything in there because prior, when we were just mowing it and it was kind of a, just kind of a park, kind of not of a park, um, once we were handed that back, because it went off contract mowing and then water department did it because it's their property, but then they just, I think, kind of weren't mowing it fast enough and didn't want to deal with all the dog people over there. It came back to us, and I said, well, we'll take it back, but I want it to be a real park. And so uh, that section, the half that we have that we mow and maintain is now a real park. And so now I felt comfortable putting in a bench 
over there. So uh, the only thing it's missing is the little plaque that goes on the back that has the Boy Scouts name and everything. But he did a really nice job on it. Very good. That's all I have. Is there any new business anybody would like to bring up? I would, please. Oh. Um, with the, I guess the, with the acceptance of the board, I'd like to ask Wayne to look into possibly how we could seal the old tennis courts. I know the, 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 the top is not the best. I get that. They make stuff where you can actually, like a big caulk gun, you can put into the cracks and just seal it and make us some pickleball courts, what it would cost. Um, we are, we're, we're a ways away from the next capital improvement sales tax plan and if potentially to put pickleball courts there maybe, but just looking for an option there. Um, after the fair, you know, it's, it's cleaned up. I mean, there's nothing there. I mean, maybe do we need the lights? Maybe it doesn't have to have lights. Maybe it's just a, I like to be a conversation, I guess is all are I'm the, saying. Are the lights there functional still? I'm not sure. That's why I said, we just like to look into it. Don't believe so. You know, I know the pavement at times is cracked and there's an issue there. We have to take it all out and redo it all. Well, can we just put a band -aid. Can we put a Band-Aid on it and have pickleball courts for four or five years until we do look at something else? That might, and, that but just a cost estimate, I guess, is all I'm asking for. Um, if everybody, good idea, bad idea, I don't know, but I'm just saying we're still looking for that spot and it's not that bad where we could fix it up a little bit city street department has their own seal you know we could oil seal it and put the posts and the, the nets up maybe it would work out maybe it'd be an option um yeah i can look into that so just kind of a, a might not have we just a, jump might into not it, have it for next meeting though yeah i understand but just prior or november maybe so before we jump in a cost estimate would be good just yep. to look into because i again i think I, it's going to be think, i think that's a good number idea. of years yeah, I don't think if it doesn't cost too much, I think it's a great idea because people are definitely looking for that out in that area. Right. Without just you know, all over town, pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I know, Wayne, I should tell you this separately, but I'd like to look into <laughs> uh -oh. the parks maintenance shed. Oh, yeah. I know it's on the capital improvement sales tax plan to uh, add on out there. Um, I have a intuition that it's going to be very difficult to buy steel to build that building in the next couple of years. Um, not saying it's not going to happen, not saying it can't be, that's part of what we wanted to do. I'd love for you or Chad to look into, they make buildings where we put them on top of those two by four blocks and they go four or five blocks high and it's a canvas cover over the top. You can make a pretty big building. I'd like to know what it costs, you know. Is that what they have at um, the MoDOT shed at Eureka? Yeah, kind of like I think that, that's yes. MoDOT, yeah. If you know, those are con day. those are big concrete blocks, correct? Not wooden blocks. Blocks. Two foot okay. by two foot by four yeah. foot, and they make them yeah. like you stack them like bricks. You can stack mm -hmm. them too high, yeah, six high, uh, whatever. Yep. The canvas building's over the top. We just got, we've got cedars and snow plows and all this equipment that's sitting outside, oh, I and I really have a, I have a strong inkling we're not going to get that shed built for what we want to get it. I know it's not. It's going to cost more than we. Oh thought. yeah, we don't even. It's not going to happen. Um, price of steel we have a very small amount of money to right do the whole and I know that the, you know the building needs to be renovated and things like that but there's stuff stored inside the building that could be stored under a canopy uh, a building like that so just a you know again a cost where we could come back and discuss here how big can it be you know um, I mean the behind the shed you're only looking at woods and back to Yenzer's house I mean it's it's not like we're deterring anybody back there um, so anyway, kind of get an idea what I'm thinking about blocks high enough where you can stack stuff along the side. You know, if, if you put the, if you put that tarp canvas type thing in on the ground, then it, it, if it's hooped and it kind of starts low, but if you put the blocks a little high, six, eight feet high, then you can store stuff along the side. So it just becomes space prohibitive anyway. So anyway, just a thought yeah, and something we need to, cause we're going to end up have to look into an alternative method to store stuff in, I think. So <laughs> thank you. Yep. I had a quick question too, Wayne. I had somebody ask a question. You know, on the riverfront trail, we got the restroom down underneath the bridge. Mm -hmm. Is there any thought of putting one out They thought uh, over by the loop on the west end? Maybe, you know, that's about, about a half mile, about the same distance as it is from, from there to the river, to the, to the bridge from the river downtown, riverfront. Well, uh, I mean, we have that one there before you go before you get, down. Before you did, yeah, I knew that one was there. That Somebody one had there, just asked, so I was. 
I mean, that's a half a mile away. I, I, we spent a lot of money on restrooms. Um, a lot of trees. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Um, I mean, I can I, see part of that mile. trail from my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so can I. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. I'd, I'd ask, but I don't want that. Pass it along. The one before the dip is used a lot. Yeah. It's, plan ahead. But I don't, yeah, plan ahead, plan ahead. <laughs> we'll sign <Right>. this <laughs> And Jeff's touched on something. Several yeah. months ago, we had closed session, and I don't know if we're allowed to talk about the real estate. Uh, yeah. Uh, everything, anything ever become of that? Yeah. Are we not yeah, allowed? These guys no, it's, it's already closed. It's taken care of. It's purchased. Uh, we actually had a, a nice thank you note from him saying, appreciate it. And, it's, Who bought it's a it done then? deal. Can you um, allowable? Yeah. I don't remember. I'd have to look it back up. By the parks office? Yeah, right, right behind the, the maintenance. Um, Burkhardt, isn't it? Sounds right. I can't remember, yeah. Yeah, he actually sent an email to us as a council and just thanked us for the consideration and doing that. Um, Good. He actually, I mean, in my opinion, he's doing us a favor. He's maintaining Maintain. yeah. right. that hillside yeah. um, that we really can't get to. There was a little discussion in council that, you know, we don't want to give, you know, we don't want to, you know, give away land or sell land that we could potentially use one day. But the way the ravine is in the back of there, you're never going to get to it. It wasn't going to work for anything. <laughs> you have to put a bridge and a road just to get to it yeah. for really nothing. So uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I wish I could. Well. I can't remember how long ago I've it was. Too many uh, Fred Hartbank. Hartbank, correct. Yeah. He emailed and said, I'd like to take a moment of, of your time. I've received the last of the paperwork this week on the purchase of the city and attached my property. The last item was on a recorded easement deed for sanitary sewer line. It has been a long process started in April this year. I know everyone was involved one way or another between April and now. I greatly appreciate all of your help and efforts to make this happen. Keep up the great work for this town we love. Thank you. So yeah, you're good. Fred Hartbank, that's his name. Hey, any other questions, comments? We'd like to bring oh, up at this time. I do have one more thing. That oh, right happens. ahead. Uh, someone sent me some pictures this weekend of parking on the grass at soccer. <laughs> I was. <laughs> um, and so I immediately called the non-emergency number, and they um, sent some. I, I'm assuming they sent someone out. I followed up with a text to chief um, he understood the situation that we need to nip it in the butt you know um, right away since this is like one of the first weekends of of the season and but I don't know I've thought I did cross my mind today when I was driving somewhere to follow up with chief or police to see what happened but I don't know what happened for what it's worth there are not signs on that side which side the north side where the cars were parked. Of the parking lot? It's the ramp, the road going up to the parking lot. Oh, yep. on that, oh my. I thought they were all over up in there. It was they just that one whole on side? The, on the south side, they're about every five, 10 feet. No, I mean, I thought by the picture, I thought the cars were all over up. No, there. no, no, they were just on the, you know, just on the small triangle, oh, okay. go, you know, from the end of the parking lot down to, what is that, Veterans Drive? No. South Lakeshore? South Lakeshore. Okay, so just that little, Probably, just the ramp, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half a dozen cars, yeah. Okay. I was there Friday night for a bit. My nephew played, so I was able to make it that for, you know, make it there for a little bit, and I had to chuckle on the inside because the grass was so long that the kids couldn't kick the ball. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> uh, I'm like, if this was us, we'd be getting a phone call saying it was not right, so... Um, you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't like it was terrible, but they had Is three and four-year-olds, and you couldn't see their shoes, and they'd kick the ball, and it wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> well, for a while, there was some brown spots. Have that have, is that cleared up? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I, I went through there today, and it that's looks cleared nice up? and green up there. Yeah, yeah okay. I only went to one field. field and I watched. walked up there a couple okay. weeks ago, and it looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was. I had to contact, <clears throat> excuse me, contact them this summer. Um, there was something wrong with the they didn't have the they weren't running the irrigation long enough and it was pretty right. brown up there in spots and so i had right. to send a friendly reminder um just so it looks better water. oh yeah it looks a lot better than with the pictures the summer, yeah. okay okay that's good um, that's and good. then she 
they did contact me today. They're buying grass seed, and they sent me the tags of what they wanted to buy. And uh, the only, th only thing was is they wanted they sent it this morning, and they wanted to buy it today. Um, so I had to scramble this morning. That's what I was doing with Josh, um, and to get them an answer. And so what they had selected was good, and uh, so I told them to proceed. So okay. So that's been a good situation. I mean, so far, yeah. So good. far, so good. So far. Good been relatively low maintenance so that's good so any updates on like the benches down on the riverfront trail when you just see the empty concrete pads yeah we're gonna um as staff we get a lot of calls and it's that's another one of those projects uh, <laughs> uh for this fall that uh, i need to get going on and so i probably am gonna have to form a small committee of probably some people here on this on park board to come up with this actually there was a yeah we had the committee once. because we did the benches and the trees it was john did we ever get i know we worked on the trees one point didn't we it was supposed to be benches yeah. and ideas you had yeah. some of the ideas were like besides benches because they were full it was picnic tables and then they talked about trees and they talked so there is a committee established if you go back you could probably combination park board and, and urban, urban, forestry. Uh, uh, urban forestry i thought it was a committee for trees and a separate committee for benches no, no. no. we even had trash oh, okay. containers. No. because john wants to have a trash container okay. his name. yeah that, i told him that would not be a problem when the time comes what about sunflowers how about what sunflowers like in the middle part of the trail on the Oh, well, see, that could be another idea. Jeannie and I were talking. But there is a co there is a committee, so maybe you just bring them back together. Dove hunters. Also. Yeah, I think I'm going to have yeah. have Do what? Dove staff <laughs> maybe work with the committee for a while, and then then I can get involved. Right. I, right. Seriously. And we get through energy. September, but then you know you yeah. could we could you could bring them back together, and they can because there was one, and there were a lot of different ideas, and then see what. But it was because I think the reason or, urban forestry came in was because people wanted to donate a tree. Then we had the benches, then, and we were running out of space for benches yeah. and just you know what I mean. So, yeah, they they could do that. They could. You yeah, could. Were you been, involved in that, or was that? No, stuff? I was. Yeah, yeah, we met like once because back in 2019, a, and then a, all these yeah. projects came, and that's why I've been. That had to be early in your tenure. I, I never get like all the projects either get pushed up or. And the balance, like, I could never get that one high enough to compete with Ronzik Field or some of the other bigger projects, you know, that come up and pavilions and all that stuff. So, so do you have the benches? Now that we're wanting, no, not, not all no, not we don't. Some and of them. The, prob okay. the ones we were using or have been using price went up. They have skyrocketed in yeah. price. Way up. When yeah. we stopped in 20, what was it, 2017 was like last time. And now the benches are three, what we have. The same bench is like three times as what it was. So now we got to maybe go back to the drawing board on the style of bench too. Yeah. Is there a list of those who have donated four benches? Yes. Yes. So we still have that earmark. They call. To go we write them down. And, and, I was, and, is there still a? <laughs> so we. Anyway, they're getting, they're getting the they call. Yeah. Because I know when I called about donating a tree, you said that the list was like you had kind of stopped it, right? Yeah, in 2017, they kind of had stopped just doing all everything, and then now we've just been compiling names, like every since okay. compiling names and numbers. And so likely, we need to find out what kind of bench we want. Yeah, purchase it because we have the money from donations. But the no, money we don't, doesn't cover no one, the bench. We have no money. Nothing's the been. Price, what, oh, you what, have no money. Right. No. What and and they want to donate a bench, and the benches were X amount of dollars, and now they're like triple quadruple we also don't have a, enough spaces to put all the benches everybody wants so this committee came together to come up with other ideas so we could say Jeff we you know we know you want to donate this bench but we really there currently there is no would you like to donate a tree would you like to do this would you like to do that so that it's get that list comes down, but there's so many people on there. There's no places for all the but, benches, and the money has just gotten. I but mean, the I list, you could the list is a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars back then, and you'd have a bench on concrete. You know what I mean? Then now it's like three or four thousand dollars, and it's out of hand. Well, it sounds to me like we have the concrete slabs there, some, some. some. but not near right. what we have on the list. So yeah. we got to find a bench that goes in that. If if it's five. Let's start with the top five. 
Well, but they. And if you're on the list and it, the price is now twenty five hundred dollars, do you want a bench for twenty five hundred dollars? Right. And if they say no, we go to the next person. Want to share a bench? The, the right. list is not getting any smaller by the, sitting here. Is what I was going to say. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you start but something. that's with the committee, and then with COVID, and like everything else, it all shut down. So we should bring that committee back together. We should look at that list, and they, and they, right. they should begin the process. But like everything, and we know it, everything gets. It, it, we were short people, and then a project comes along and everything gets dropped because that project's gotta get done, and then that gets dropped because that's gotta get done. You know what I mean? And I use that excuse at my house too, but my wife says, yeah, oh, and you're ready to, things right. gotta get I, done. Right. I right. can appreciate that, but I can also appreciate someone that wanted to donate a bench to I their agree. mother who passed six years ago and they still I, haven't heard anything. I, and well, they've heard, but they've they haven't called. given money, have they? No. 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 Okay. No, no money. But in the meantime, what they wanted to donate has now become tripled. So, yeah. you know, the longer we wait to do that, the more it costs them. And the, like I mean, Jeff says, go down the list. And if they can't afford that, then that's when you need the options. Right. But so you guys also would be, it would be <clears throat> nice to be able to say to them, after you apologize that it, nothing has happened, that the bench is $3,000. The tree right. is $1,000. This is, five, you know what I mean? Give them so they could... Yeah. And they might say, you know what? You made me mad. I'm not doing it anymore. We're very sorry. We apologize. And you move down to the and next the one. Room. But I bet you on that list, how many? I, I bet you there's. Yeah. For benches? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And, and if, is, well, so we, now we got to find yeah. a place for them all. And then, it's, how, so how does the committee get done? I mean, well, I guess what I'm saying is, is. There is a committee. And they should be recalled back to work. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are already people that have worked on it. They just need to be recalled back and begin to work on it and make suggestions. And then Wayne can come in at some point. You know what I mean? Staff possibly could work with them, and then, and then they can give their ideas because they got they had what? You had two or three meetings. Right. And one of the yeah. problems too is we had people say, "I want a tree planted here," you know, and we said no. So what we came up with is a tentative list of where we needed trees and the type of trees because we didn't want them just putting any tree out, you know, like I need to have a crab apple right in the center of the park. No, here's the trees that we are looking for if you would like to buy one of these. And these are the areas. Park. And right. we, had, we had that list. Together. Right, we, I mean, yeah. so that's what we, we're working at. Here's uh, what the bench looks that. like. Here's where the bench is gonna go. Would you like to donate to this bench? Here's a tree that we want to put in this spot. Would you like to donate to this tree? And that's what we're talking about, Jeff. Right. And right. I, yeah. Right. I think the other thing that came up, too, uh, because Wayne being so short-handed, because Chad and the guys were doing the pads, we actually talked about if the pads were contracted out. Yeah, there's a lot that goes. It's not just cost buy a bench and put it in. So it's we were trying to figure out cost-wise and who's going to do it. And, uh, you know, and the trees will only be planted in spring and fall, just twice a year, because we have people that say, hey, I lost somebody, I want a tree plant it now, you know. So we just want to do twice a year is when we'll plant them, basically. And at one point in time, if I'm not mistaken, we were short spots to put benches, were we not? We still are. Right. Right. Still are. Right. But still with this, um, I'm, I'm thinking with the new, whole new bush green, uh, Greenway, oh, okay. we've we've got some spaces for benches. That's a good one. That's yeah, a good possibly. Idea. Yeah. Just okay. Committee recall. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Go. All right. Any other questions at this time? Nope. Can we adjourn? Well, we can. <laughs> the next meeting is scheduled for October twelfth, um, and I would need to have a motion and a second. I will motion. I'll second. All right, we have a, a motion by Gavin and a second by Kevin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, see you next month. Oh, okay. Yes, sir.